Formula One and NASCAR both have a very big problem. NASCAR and Formula One went head to head on Sunday in basically the same time slot. The NASCAR Cup Series race started just before 3 p.m. East Coast time down in Homestead, right outside of Miami, and Formula One started just at 3 p.m. East Coast time down in Austin at Circuit of the Americas. NASCAR did draw nearly two times as many viewers as Formula One did. NASCAR drew 2.25 million viewers on Sunday, which by all accounts is okay. It was only down 2.5% compared to last year. Meanwhile, Formula One drew 1.17 million viewers for the race portion of the broadcast, but that was down 12.69, nice, percent compared to last year, and that is a major problem. In the demographic that every marketing team in the country plus Don Draper cares about, the 18 to 49 year old demo, in that coveted demographic, NASCAR drew 339,000 viewers, essentially 15% of their viewing audience on Sunday. Formula One, meanwhile, drew 442,000 viewers, or 36% of their total viewing audience. That's really bad news for both of them, if we're being completely honest here, because for NASCAR, that means that 85% of their viewers on Sunday are age 50 or older. That's not good for the future of NASCAR, because when all of those boomers start to go away and meet their ultimate demise, unfortunately, that means that NASCAR is going to be left with that viewing audience, which is currently only 15% of what they're getting right now. Formula One, meanwhile, at least has 36% of their viewing audience in America is in that coveted demographic. And of course, Formula One does not take into account what F1 TV did. I see a lot of people being like, that would raise the number a ton. It's not really going to affect the number that much. It might bump you up to 37 or 38%, but it's still not going to be anything that's really worth writing home about at the end of the day. Both of these series and motorsport in general needs to find a way desperately needs to find a way how to connect to that 18 to 49 year old demo. Formula One has done it. Formula One has positioned themselves in America as this high class form of motorsport, right? As this luxury brand. They've had Drive to Survive that's done all this great marketing for them. They portrayed themselves as this brand, this entity that is, you know, considered a luxury, if you will. NASCAR, meanwhile, has tried to shed its southern good old boy redneck stereotype in recent years by going to cities that, you know, aren't your traditional NASCAR cities. Racing on the streets of Chicago is supposed to help that, going out to LA, and, you know, and a couple other places as well. They have not done a very good job of doing that and connecting with a younger audience. NASCAR's tried, and they continue to maybe make the wrong decisions here, but they're not connecting with that 18 49 year old demo the same way that at least Formula One has in recent years. And that's a big problem for them going forward. Obviously a big reason for why both of these motorsports series saw their ratings decline and their viewership numbers come down is because of the NFL. The NFL owns Sunday in America. They own Sunday, they own Thursday night, they own Monday night. They don't every night if honestly the teams in the NFLPA would let them, but they can't. And because they own Sunday, having your race on a Sunday is very difficult. NASCAR starts their race just before 3 p.m. East Coast time in the second half of most of the one o'clock kickoff games. Same with Formula One here. And then the race, you know, the NASCAR race didn't end until sometime almost midway through the 4 p.m. kickoff games, while the Formula One race ends about right as the 4 p.m. games are kicking off and right as the one o'clock games are ending. So it's kind of tough to pull fans away from watching the NFL, which they love. There's only 17 weeks of the NFL, right? So they have to tune into that to watch their team play. Technically 18, but you have the seven because you have 17 games doesn't matter you, you guys understand what i'm saying meanwhile nascar is 36 races so you can watch all of those and it's very apparent that nascar loses a ton of viewership in the fall when football comes on take taldega for example a few weeks ago it was 45 percent down in the fall compared to its spring counterpart on fox and that's not because fox is doing that much better of a job that's just because there's no other competition for it and that taldega race is really good as well and now you look at what they're doing in the playoffs here, NASCAR that is in terms of ratings, and they're pretty stagnant at like two to like two and a half million. It might get up to like 2.7, but it, you know, it just doesn't hold the same weight as the NFL does. And Formula One doesn't particularly care about the NFL because they're really just focused on having a primetime viewing ship audience for uh, Europe. And that's why the race are scheduled at three o'clock, because that means it's an 8 p.m. start in England and, you know, 
add an hour as you continue to move across Eastern Europe there, and they don't really care about the American audience per se. I mean, there's a, that's the reason why the Las Vegas Grand Prix doesn't start until 1 a.m. East Coast time on Sunday morning. It's essentially like waking up and trying to watch the Japanese Grand Prix. Uh, because their audience and their focal point isn't on that American audience. I would argue that that might be dumb because it's going to be hard to get a foothold. But, you know, smarter people than me and everybody else are out here making these decisions. But NASCAR and Formula 1 both have a big problem. Obviously, NASCAR, uh, we've known this for years. And seeing the two go head-to-head -head was, you know, it's nice to see that just because you get to kind of compare and contrast. Um... One of the, the rosy cheek gap tooth guy on one of those popular NASCAR podcasts said that NASCAR would have three times the amount of viewers as Formula One. They didn't. They had, you know, right around just under two times the amount of viewers. And honestly, that's where I expected it to be. You kind of expect Formula One to get right around a million, 1.1 million viewers for having a race in America on network television on ABC. Uh, and then you have NASCAR, and anytime NASCAR's you know, off of cable and on the network, you, you know that the ratings are going to be a little bit higher. If that same race is on USA, you're looking at maybe getting 1.7 million, 1.6. Like, it's not going to be good at all. So I, the solution for NASCAR is obviously to not race on Sundays in the fall when the NFL is on. But you can't race on Saturdays because Saturday nights are already a black hole for ratings. Going up against college football is not a good idea either. Can't race on Friday nights. That's even worse than racing on Saturday nights. Can't race on Monday nights because the NFL already owns Monday night. And unless you're going to do Tuesday, that makes absolutely no sense as well. So they either end their season early like IndyCar does, and I don't think anybody wants to see that. You're basically telling NASCAR to end their season right around the Southern 500. Um, that would be an incredibly short season, and with them contracted to have 36 points paying races a year, you're going to start having midweek races or double headers, and I don't necessarily know if anybody wants to do that. At the same time, Formula One doesn't really care but in terms of competing with the NFL, but they do need to do more to try to you know get a foothold in America. Obviously, having over a million viewers is great because if you would have checked 10 years ago, they didn't have that when the U.S. Grand Prix debuted. So having it now is a lot better. All right, so let me know in the comments. Did you watch the NASCAR race? Did you watch the Formula One race? Did you dual screen it like I did? TV on top, TV on the bottom, best viewing experience out there. Or did you just say, I don't wanna watch any racing day and just watch the NFL? Let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.